Hello students, welcome to the second session of the chapter number 12 of your second PUC in CRT that is biotechnology and its application. In last session we did discuss about some of the concepts regarding the application level of biotechnology in the field of agriculture. We had discussed about Bt cotton as well as a tobacco plant which is affected by a nematode. So in today's class, we will move the field from agriculture into medicine. So here we will be studying about the application level of biotechnology in the field of medicine. The first one will be genetically engineered. insulin when it comes to genetically engineered insulin now first we should know what is insulin insulin is a hormone which is produced in the islets of langer hands by the b cells in pancreas so this insulin helps in controlling the blood sugar level in the human body the person who lacks this insulin is termed a diabetic So, diabetic patients will have lesser secretion of insulin in their body and they cannot control their blood sugar level. So, to avoid this one, there were certain medicines which were introduced. Mainly, the diabetic patients will be given either injections or tablets which can be consumed orally to control the blood sugar level that is artificially introduction of this insulin. But later what happened was, they started to divert or the medicine field started to divert towards production of insulin from animals. So there were different animals which were slaughtered for production of this insulin. Even a cow was also slaughtered, pigs as well as some other organisms were slaughtered. But the insulin produced by slaughtering such a large organism was very very little. And it also started causing allergies and side effects when introduced into human body. That is why it was necessary to know what are the components which are present in insulin. So uh, insulin it is made up of two chains that is A chain and a B chain. This is a polypeptide chain which are held together by a disulfide bridge. These are held together by a disulfide bridge. That means insulin produces a peptide chain with a chain and B chain with double bond or a double bridge which is made up of disulfide. But in human or in mammals, the insulin produced were of three different chains that is A chain, B chain and C chain and initially they will not be in an activated form but they will be in the pro-hormonic form. which are inactive. But at maturity, this C peptide chain gets removed and only A and B peptide chains will be retaining with the disulfide bridge. So that means these C peptides are present or C peptide chain is present only in the pro-hormonic form or in its immature form. But when the insulin gets mature form, this a and B peptide chains will be retained with the disulfide bridges. So that is why a American company called Eli Lilly where they introduced a DNA corresponding to A peptide and B peptide and this was introduced into a E. coli plasmid. This A chain as well as B chain were produced separately and once they were matured, they were held together with the help of a disulfide bridges. So this was the way with which 
they could produce artificial insulin and it is still successfully running throughout the world. Once again to explain, this genetically engineered insulin, that means insulin is the one which is produced from the islets of Langerhans of pancreas, especially with the help of B cells or beta cells. These produce a hormone called insulin which helps in controlling the blood sugar level in the human body. The patient or the person who fails to have enough number of insulin, he is termed a diabetic. To overcome this diabetes, there are different methods like injections or oral medicines which are introduced into the body of the patient to increase the insulin level and to control the blood sugar. But later, they thought of introducing insulin from other organisms into the body of the diabetic patient. But that was a disaster because large number of organisms were slaughtered which produced a very less amount of insulin. Plus, there were also side effects which were caused by animal insulins into the human body. So, later we had to discover what exactly are the components in the insulin. So, insulin is made up of a polypeptide chain. So, it is a proteinaceous structure. So, when it comes to insulin, it contains a peptide chain and B peptide chain which are held together by disulfide bridges. Next what had happened was to see whether they will be produced in the same form or not. But insulin were produced in its pro-hormonic form or in its immature form. In its immature form there were three peptide chains that is A chain, B chain and C chain. So, during maturity, the C peptide chain would be removed and would retain only A and B chain which were held together by this disulfide bridges. So, American company termed Ali Lilly did introduce a DNA corresponding to A chain and B chain into the vector that is E. coli plasmid. So, E. coli is Escherichia coli, it is a bacteria into the plasmid of this bacteria, the DNA producing this chains of A and B were introduced. Both this A and B chains were produced independently and once they were long enough or mature enough, they were brought together and held together with the help of disulfide bridges. Here they did not produce any of the C peptide chains as this was produced artificially, they produced the mature insulin not a pro-hormonic form. That is why C peptide chains were not produced itself, only A and B chains were produced and held together by disulfide bridges. So this was a successful experiment and even is running throughout the world now also, which is a boon for this diabetic patients. Next contribution of biotechnology in the field of medicine will be gene therapy. So, in this gene therapy, it is a collection of different methods which allows to treat the gene defects that is which allows to treat the gene defects in a child or in an embryo. So, here what they do is they introduce the genes into a particular person who is having this gene defects and treat a particular disease. Example for this will be a 4 year old girl was treated for ADA. Uh, ADA is adenosine deaminase. So, in adenosine deaminase what happens is our immune system fails to function properly. So, this ADA it can also be treated by except gene therapy method other methods like bone marrow transplantation as well as enzyme replacement treatment. So, these two methods can also be used in treating this ADA. But these two methods are not a successful one because these do not completely cure this ADA. To cure it completely, we can go for gene therapy method. So, in this method what they do is they extract the lymphocytes 
from the patient's blood and culture them and culture them in lab conditions and to this lymphocytes there will be introduction of the cdna that is ada cdna so this is the correction dna where there is loss of that particular gene that is deletion of gene causes this ada that is why here from the infected person or from the person who lacks this particular gene the lymphocytes from their blood is extracted and they are cultured in the lab condition and in the lab condition they are introduced with ada cdnas this is used or introduced into the lymphocyte culture with the help of retrovirus retrovirus means these viruses have rna as their genetic material so using this retrovirus this ada cdna is introduced into the lymphocytes once the culture is successfully introduced with the cdna it is transferred or injected into the patient's body this method of gene therapy has to be proven successful if it is in a child then this method should be frequently repeated but if it is in embryonic stage this is a permanent cure because the number of cells will be less and this next cells produced or next lymphocytes produced all will be having this cdna which is a permanent cure so that's about the contribution of biotechnology in the field of medicine once again to discuss in the field of medicine here there was introduction of insulin this insulin was used to control the blood sugar level in diabetic patients a diabetic patient will have lack of production of this insulin hormone so animal hormones were used initially but it was a disaster failure later what had happened was they had studied the structure of the insulin which produces a and b polypeptide chains this peptide or polypeptide chain was not only the chains produced initially but there were also production of one more chain that was c peptide chain but when a uh, insulin contains a b and c peptide chains it means that it is in its pro hormonic form that is it is not matured but in a matured insulin we can see that a uh, a peptide chain b peptide chain is produced which is held together with the help of disulfide bridges and c peptides are removed during maturity the same concept was used by eli lilly company an american company to produce this a peptide and b peptide separately in a vector of e coli especially in the plasmid so they produced them independently and then joined them without producing any of the c peptides next one is use of this biotechnology in gene therapy so gene therapy includes that you are treating the person's genetic level or altering the genes or introducing or removing the genes so that the particular disease can be treated here what had happened was it was or the gene therapy was very much successful in a 4 year girl who was suffering from ada ada means adenosine d aminase where our immune system fails to function properly so to treat this apart from gene therapy there are two different methods to treat this that will be a bone marrow transplantation and enzyme replacement these two methods are not successful because these do not prove to be a permanent cure so we had to move towards this gene therapy in gene therapy what did they do was they did take some of the lymphocytes from the blood sample of the patient they cultured it in under lab condition later they introduced a ada cdna using a retrovirus as vector and they started to produce this lymphocytes which naturally did produce the cdna this lymphocytes were introduced into the patient's body which proved to be a successful one so if a child is present then the process should be repeated frequently but if it is treated at embryonic level it can be considered as a permanent cure so that's about 
contribution of biotechnology in the field of agriculture as well as in the field of medicine. Next is molecular diagnosis. Different techniques like recombinant DNA, ELISA, this is enzyme linked immunosorbent assay which is based on antigen antibody interactions next PCR that is polymerase chain reaction and some of the other techniques like using RNA or DNA and tagging it or labeling it with the radioactive probe and cloning it and complementary DNAs are produced in a clones of cells as well as detecting them to auto radiography. Using all these different techniques we can identify and track and as well as treat different types of diseases. Next is about transgenic animals. Animals who have their gene manipulated to possess and express a foreign gene those are called transgenic animals. So in this transgenic animals we will be altering the natural genes which are present in the animals and we manipulate it so that the organism contains or possess this gene as well as express a particular type of foreign gene. So those are called transgenic animals. Now we should know the reasons to produce this transgenic animals that will be normal physiology and development. Next will be study of disease, and the third one will be biological products. Fourth one, vaccine safety. Fifth one, chemical safety testing. These are the reasons for producing transgenic animals. First one is normal physiology and development. So in this normal physiology and development, we will be studying about a particular gene which expresses a particular character especially if you see what is the type of character it expresses, how this affects the human growth and development. So that study can be included under normal physiology and development. Example, uh, there, is, there are certain growth hormones which are produced in our body. So in that insulin is one type of growth hormone. So what is the effect of this insulin or how do they control the blood sugar in a particular individual? Where are they produced? In what amount are they produced? What is their effect on blood sugar? Whether it is positive or how long will it be produced? All these studies can be included under normal physiology and development. Next one is study of the disease. So it is very much important to know the reason, know the ability of a particular type of a pathogen which causes a particular type of disease or a gene defect which causes a disease. So here we first before giving the treatment we should know what are their effects or how are they produced. So using this study of disease it has helped in treating different types of diseases like rheumatoid arthritis cystic fibrosis, cancers as well as Alzheimer's disease. These all disastrous disease have been easy for treatment because study about these disease made it very helpful to solve or to treat the particular types of disease. 
Next is biological products. So biological products means here we are using the transgenic animals, we are introducing a portion of a gene or a DNA into the transgenic animal and making sure that it produces a particular type of biological product or a biological product which is rich in different types of components. For example, if you see using this biological or transgenic animals, we have produced a biological product that is a human protein. That is So using this transgenic animals for our own production of biological products, we have produced a human protein that is alpha 1 antitrypsin which helps in treating of emphysema. One more example you can give is this rosy was the first transgenic cow which was used somewhere around 1997 which produced milk which contained almost about 2.4 grams per liter that is the human protein. The human protein was human alpha lactalbumin. So a first transgenic cow in 1997 Rosie did produce milk which contained almost about 2.4 grams per liter of human protein that is human alpha lactalbumin. This human alpha lactalbumin was much more useful when fed to humans especially babies. Newborn babies ke e milk anna kodadrinda human alpha lactalbumin deficiency idre that was coped. So this particular biological product produced using a transgenic cow was a successful one. So that comes under biological products. Next when it comes to vaccine safety, before we introduce any of the medicines to human population, it is initially tested on animals. So it is normally tested or this vaccine safety or vaccines are tested on transgenic animals especially the mice. When it comes to chemical safety testing can be done when a transgenic animal is used and in which these genes are introduced and the organism is led to lead a normal life and these genes are carried in it. So after that they become very much sensitive to the toxic substances, their effects will be easily studied. That comes under chemical safety testing. So these are the reasons why transgenic animals will be used. Once again to discuss, here the first reason is normal physiology and development. So initially will be knowing a particular gene expressing a particular character. The genes will be studied, the character expression will also be studied and how they affect a normal individual that also will be studied or which helps in the normal growth and development. Example I did give you a growth hormone that will be insulin. Next one study of diseases. It is very much necessary to know the disease before a treatment can be provided to that particular disease. What are its effect, which are the vital organs it does affect, all this will be studied and based on this study different diseases like cystic fibrosis, cancer, Alzheimer's, rheumatoid arthritis, all these diseases are treated successfully. Next one is biological products. So using this transgenic organism, we are altering or inserting a portion of DNA or genes into that so that we obtain a biological product for our own particular benefit. One of them was production of human protein that is alpha 1 antitrypsin which was used to treat the emphysema disease. Apart from this one, a first transgenic organism or a cow that is rosy was produced in 1997 which did produce high yield that is milk which contained almost about 2.4 grams per liter of human protein that will be human alpha lactalbumin. This can be directly fed into the human babies and have high nutritional value. 
Next one is vaccine safety that vaccine safety means before any vaccine is introduced into the human population it is tested on transgenic organisms and that easily available transgenic organism will be a mice. Next chemical safety testing that is done so that the transgenic organism carries this genes for certain time and after which they become sensitive to toxic substances based on which we can study the effects of this particular gene on those toxic substances. These are the reasons for using transgenic animals. Next is ethical issues. Ethical issues means manipulation of genes using different organisms but under a regulated manner that means there are certain rules which is to be followed to conduct a experiment or to use or produce a transgenic organism. It may be a mice, it may be a monkey, it might be a rabbit. So all should pass under this ethical committee so that they can undergo the experiment. So there is a committee called GEAC that is genetically engineered. committee. So this genetically engineered approval committee puts forward certain rules and regulation to produce or to undergo genetically modified researches on different animals. Only if it is approved then only you can legally undergo this experiment on different animals. Next comes the concept is patent. Patent is a government or licensed so patent means it is a government authority or licensed conferring or title for a set of period which can be used by any of the person or a company which makes a product for selling or using their inventions so that others cannot copy that and they can use it for their own benefit. So a patent anta heladre when the government agirvantadu athava license confer agirvantadu athava title koduvantadu. So all these for a set of period when the product anna now sale madbeku anta heliadre it should be patent. So patent anta heladre it should be authorized by the government so that you can sell and commercially use that product or you can use it for your own benefit but it cannot be produced by any other company using their name but can produce by using your name or the product what you have given or the name for the product what you have given. So that is about patent. Example for this will be rice especially basmati rice which are produced or there are almost about 2 lakh varieties of basmati rice which were produced in India. So this use of basmati rice was taken by a US company, US company then a patent mark called to. They crossed a Indian basmati rice with a dwarf form. So why basmati rice only in the The grains of basmati rice are long as well as they are very aromatic. So now if any company wants to sell this basmati rice that will be under the US patent. Not all variety but only a variety which was crossed or Indian basmati which was crossed with the dwarf variety should be sold only under the US patent company name. Other varieties can be sold by any other companies. That is about the patent. Next concept is biopiracy. So biopiracy means you might have heard about different pirated CDs and all which are available in public. So now biopiracy in case of biotechnology means here we are using bio resources which will be taken up by some of the multinational companies and organization or sometimes even countries also. They take it, alter it and sell it without proper authorization or without legal permission. So either from without legal permission either from the person who have produced it or from the company which has produced it. So we simply alter the name and sell it. So that is what is called biopiracy. In case of biopiracy a bio resource is 
illegally sold without the authorization of the either government or the person who have invented it. So that is what is biopiracy. Once again to discuss in ethical issues, you will be studying about different organisms which undergo genetic modification, research experiment should be authorized or should be taking the permission of a committee that is genetically engineered approval committee so that they can conduct the experiment. When it comes to patent, either a government authorized or licensing conferring or title for a certain period of time is issued for a product to be sold, to be purchased as well as which can be used for your own benefit as you have invented it. So this for example, I had given you the basmati rice, almost about 2 lakh varieties of basmati rice are produced in India, out of which one 27 are documented variety which is having aroma, aroma andre tumba chanagi smell barvantadu which are aromatic. So out of this one what did the US government do or the US company do was US, US took the patent as well as the trademark office. These are the one which has taken the patent for this basmati rice. The basmati variety produced by them will be crossing of Indian basmati with a dwarf variety plant. So using this one they have used a particular type of basmati rice which have for which they have taken the patent. So that is about the patent. Last one is the biopiracy that is illegally using the bio resource by unauthorized company or organization or even country without paying the required authorities or legalities for a particular person or for a particular country. So that is all about biotechnology and its application chapter. In this chapter, in this session we did discuss about application of biotechnology in the field of medicine as well as ethical issues, molecular diagnosis, patent, biopiracy and the very important one we have discussed about transgenic animals and the reason to produce this transgenic animals. Thank you.